so good afternoon. I hope everybody is doing well. Thanks for joining today's webinar, the ROI behind adopting digital dentures, presented by Daniel Alter. Daniel's experience and repertoire comprised of more than 25 years in the dental profession, and he holds the designation of a Master Dental Technologist, MDT, as well as a Certified Dental Technician, CDT, in two disciplines. I'll now turn it over to Daniel. Please take it away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And this is the, the webinar is the ROI or revenue streams behind adopting digital dentures. And it's a business model of sorts where we can incorporate all of the digital means and ways of doing what perhaps your laboratory is already deploying in the industry and being able to provide a, a breadth of, of um, both service and products to your clientele. Uh, there you go. So, what, where is technology, and where is technology taking us? You know, it's it's a it's something that we always have to kind of ponder and think about. And it's not that technology does to us; it's what we really do to technology. So, it's how we can become smart with technology in order to enhance what we can do. Which is certainly, the, as you can see in this caricature, there's a way that you know technology, and unfortunately, sometimes. Some of us fall into the left side, uh, but we really what we're trying to achieve is, is to be on the right side. Uh, technology is certainly meant to benefit us both in efficiency as well as our lifestyle. It's supposed to make things better, more efficient, while we are, um, you know, getting a better, uh, better lifestyle in the process. So using your technology to the maximum is of optimal importance. And how do we do that? Where do we choose? What do we do? just realize that the technology is meant to enhance your capabilities of not just your efficiencies and your workflow, but certainly the product, which is what we're going to talk about. And you have ample amount of different options that you can deploy. Now, we'll talk about different options and different ways that you can achieve the same, a similar ROI. And there's multiple approaches. Again, the idea with digital and CAD-CAM in specific is that it shouldn't it automates the process, but it doesn't automate your laboratory. You're still in full control of your laboratory. Your clients and your dentists have come to expect a product that is coming from your laboratory. And that should never change because that's what differentiates you from anybody else. Now, how you're able to do it efficiently and create a revenue stream, not only for your laboratory, which we'll discuss, but certainly for your clientele as well, is where they, the pearls are, where the gems are in this. So. How do you achieve that? Knowledge, and this is something that I completely subscribe to and what I live by and, and truly believe in, which knowledge is power. With knowledge, you can achieve a tremendous amount of things. Now, knowledge shared is power multiplied, and this is what we're doing here. We're sharing knowledge and sharing with our, our fellow professional family members that we can absolutely create through knowledge a key to success. And this is what this webinar really stems from. And the more you can expand, the more you can grow, the more you can learn. Uh, you know, I always have this saying where it's, it's better to have and not need than need and not have. So knowledge is that, you know, you want to be able to be able to uh, address any kind of challenges with a data-driven and knowledge-driven uh, process. You don't want to ever be caught in a situation where one of your clients is asking you to perform something and perhaps you're not knowledgeable enough because the bottom line is that client will find somebody who is. So this is where, again, just to go back to the very beginning of the opening is, this is your opportunity during this pause in time. And yes, it's uncertain times, but this is also where we can all become stronger once we emerge out. We can all become more knowledgeable and therefore we'll be able to address the concerns and certainly the trajectory that our dentist clients want. So let's first take a step back and take a look at where CAD CAM benefits are. Certainly as we, we've seen over the years, it provides a level of efficiency without a doubt. It provides a level of precision that is significantly higher uh, in different ways than perhaps before. Um, the level of complexity, which we'll spend a little bit of time in this webinar talking about, and, and specifically with implants and surgical guides and digital dentures, what you can achieve today with digital means is very different, and, and perhaps some things that you are unable to do in an analog means you can achieve things with, um, with digital. 
Now, it, and the best part of it is that there's, there's a consistent method of doing so. But in reality, what I want to take a step back is that CAD CAM in digital is not the answer at all. In reality, it is a powerful tool because it's the years of education, it's the years of experience, it's the years of the know-how, what I consider the dental intelligence and what we have as an industry have grown and cultivated to know that these restoration or these prostheses will function, will look good, will be. That's the level of dental intelligence that we can now produce that in a more efficient and precise way through digital means. So CAD CAM shouldn't change the way you do things. It should enhance and elevate the way you do things. And it's the dental intelligence that will allow you to do so, whether it's a brush or a spatula or a strokes of a mouse. The end result should still be the same. We are still restoring function and aesthetics to a human being, um, affecting their lives in a positive way. So everything that we've done, everything that our dentists have grown to expect from our laboratory should still remain, if not even become better. Um, the benefits of this is to become more efficient, to become more with a level of precision. As far as our businesses are concerned, certainly there's an efficient workflow through CAD CAM. That's undeniable, and that's been proven many, many times. But offering other solutions to your clientele. You know, this is what we, the, the majority of this webinar is going to be focused on, is being able to offer those solutions to your clientele. Now, that's not just a opportunity, which it is, an opportunity for your laboratory to grow your bottom line and your revenue stream. But in essence, you're, you're partnering with your current clientele, and maybe they're not providing this service or this product to, to their patients. So now you're enhancing that level of revenue for that dentist and therefore creating a sense of loyalty with you and your laboratory and solidifying that relationship. So as far as business sense, it's certainly a, a very positive means of doing things. And we'll, we'll go through that in this webinar. And finally, you know, also providing aesthetic restorations that your patients have come to love and your doctors have come to love. And that's the key to success as well. What are the benefits of digital technology? You know, certainly it allows the digital technology to provide the clientele with repeatable and consistent results. In fact, LMT did a survey with, for dentists about, I want to say, hmm, five or six years now uh, ago. And, you know, they asked, what, how many laboratories do dentists use? And, you know, the answer kind of shook out to about two and a half laboratories, although I don't know who that half a laboratory is. But nonetheless, the second it was the question is, why would you look for a another laboratory. And it was surprising because normally when I ask this question in the crowd in a room and, you know, it would always both things come up, whether it's price or quality. And neither one was the result. In reality, the, what dentists have, have responded to that survey overwhelmingly is that it's the consistency that they're looking, that perhaps their laboratory is not producing. They want to know that whether it's a Monday or a Friday or a Wednesday night or a Wednesday morning, that the when they open up that that um, crown box or that denture box, whatever have you, that it will fit exactly the same way. It will function exactly the same way. It will it will appear as far as aesthetics the same way they've grown to expect from your laboratory, regardless of what it is. So consistency, believe it or not, was number one. And digital technology has offered us the ability to manage that and control that and be able to provide our clientele the same level of consistency every single time, exactly what your laboratory is producing today. It is certainly increasing your productivity while maintaining your quality, and I would argue many times that it should enhance your quality, and that's something we should strive for every single day. The only competition we have, whether it's personally or in, in the laboratory space, is really competition with ourselves. What somebody else in another laboratory does is really irrelevant. It's us trying to become better today than we were yesterday and even better tomorrow. That's where your competition is. And as long as you can continue and maintain that, your dentist will be very, very con content and loyal for that matter because they know that you are providing for them the best service that is possible, something that they've grown to expect from your laboratory. And being able to do that in a consistent fashion is one of the greatest benefits, as far as I'm concerned, for digital means. It also greatly removes the anxiety caused by the inconsistencies. I can certainly recall, um, you know, sending out cases where I had sleepless nights over it. I did the best that I could. 
Um, certainly the laboratory did the most aesthetic and the best fitting, but nonetheless, we felt mm, we couldn't wait for that phone call the next day to receive from that dentist and to hear that everything went well. That's an anxiety that is in laboratories and exists all the time and, and something that I think in many ways digital has alleviated in some ways. And that caricature on the right hand side is certainly not a, a rendering of me, but uh, it, there's been many, many evenings that I've felt that way. But thankfully, with digital means, that has now no longer been an issue. And as I mentioned, for the dentist client, that too is an anxiety. When Mrs. Jones comes in, do they know that it's going to fit as well as it did the week before? Did they know that they're going to have the same results? They don't want the you know to deal with any challenges. They want to know that they can, at the very least, meet, mitigate or control any circumstances that perhaps is not that they didn't confront with before. So being able to provide those digital technologies and those benefits has alleviated us in, in ways that a lot of people don't quite recognize, certainly for clients, certainly for us, ourselves, certainly for our control and our workflow, and also our productivity and our bottom line. So as far as business is concerned, it's certainly a lot significantly better. But let's now dive down into what are you exactly producing? What is the laboratory producing? I mean, one of the things that struck me when I started working, you know, many, many years ago with digital is how identical and the workflow is to what the analog fun function is. So the learning curve is significantly shortened with that process because many of the things that we've done, whether it's, you know, we wax, we invested, we then casted and so on and so forth is identical in many ways. But what exactly what I find is that a lot of laboratories purchase a piece of technology or a piece of equipment and use it for a very in the box type of modalities. There's multiple ways that you can look and look outside the box and how do you absolutely gain the best revenue or the best ROI on your equipment? You want that equipment to be the most productive, to be working all the time, ideally to even for you in your laboratory to make money while you sleep. That is all possible in today's technology. And it, not only is it possible, it is so easily attainable. It's just a little bit of a different mindset or a mind, um, uh, you know, a, a way of thinking. So certainly there's, you can digitize model production, we're all 3D printing. You can, if you, your wax copings or crowns, all ceramic, all of us at this point, I think are doing, um, you know, our milling zirconia, lithium disilicate. But if you're doing that, and if your laboratory is doing that and doing fixed as well as, are you doing implant-supported restorations? What about removable partial dentures? And with implant-supported restorations, are you engaging in surgical guides? And then that parlays into digital dentures and orthodontics. And one of the things that you want to ask yourself if you fall into that box, um, why not? Why aren't you offering? What is stopping you from offering things? You know, and we'll get into the business end of things as to what are the benefits of doing that. But when you're looking at something and you're looking at a product, the last thing you want to do is tell one of your clients that you're unable to do that or unable to perform, don't have the knowledge to perform. Because I'm fairly confident that at this point, most laboratories, uh, if not all, have digital means, whether they do it in-house or whether they outsource, they're nonetheless able to achieve these benefits of what digital has shown us over the few years. So as I go through this, and one of the first, and, and there'll be two markets that I'm really going to highlight, the first being implants, and then we're going to get into digital ventures. But those are the two largest or biggest or, or fastest moving, growing segments in our, in our profession currently. So how do you tap into that? And if you're not tapping into that, quite honestly, reflectively ask yourself, why not? So dental implant markets are, are growing exponentially. And, and the biggest reason being is that it's, there's a higher percentage of GPs placing implants. Now, with that said, that's a, a benefit to us because most of our clients are GPs, right? So they're doing the, the uh, you know, bread and butter type of dentistry, but there's a larger percentage of them growing and moving into that placement of implants. And that presents an opportunity, which I'll get into in a second, for a laboratory to really be able to grow and, and, and expand on that. Um, certainly more predictable and surgical result, results, excuse me, with surgical guides, which I'll get into, as well as CAD-CAM restoration. The workflow becomes easier. You can shorten, you can create 
uh, split files where you're doing a custom abutment and a crown on top of it. You can do a scrementable. The, the options are endless. And again, it's what your demo intelligence that can achieve that. And doing all that, there's a significant um, a success rate increase in, in doing implantology. And that's attributed to mainly certainly surgical guides as well as enhanced precision and fit. But the numbers are astounding, and I'll share with you in a little bit what those numbers are. But there are increasing edentulous patients. You know, nowadays, dentists are incredibly knowledgeable, or I should say researched, in, in all these areas. And I don't know if you've ever heard, there's a little thing called Google out there that it seems like everybody goes in before going to the dentist. The first thing they do is they go to Google and they say, well, it's missing teeth or whatever have you. So now they're coming to the dentist with requesting certain type of prosthetics, implant supported. People want um, different things. And it's the demand for immediate satisfaction that provides that uh, trend. And the trend is absolutely growing exponentially. But these are our patients. This is your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your mothers, your uncles, whoever have you. These are all people that that depend on our services and our clients in order to function, in order to provide proper nutrition, emotional support, certainly, and so on and so forth. We are restoring a human body, a human body part, I should say. And, and another benefit to digital is, which I'm going to develop into now, is one of the things, you know, with digital as, as far as designing and, and producing, being a fixed technician or a removable technician is no longer a thing. We are a dental technician. We are restoring everything for that patient in order for them to masticate properly, to function, to look good. Whether it's a denture or an implant-supported prosthesis, the means by doing so is very similar and should follow a similar workflow. So those are the benefits, but the numbers are staggering. There are currently an estimated of 40 million people in the U.S. that are wearing denture, which equates to approximately $240 billion lab market, and as well as a $1.1 trillion dental market. You, you think that's an opportunity for us? You think that's something that we can absolutely tap into and help our clients to tap into and grow from there? Hopefully the answer is an a, a overwhelming yes. Which brings me into the implant placement planning. Now, this is, you know, I included this um, because there is a transition, as I said, from, from being a fix to a removable. But what you're able to do now with implant supported and digital dentures first, um, you're able to design significantly quicker. And Rami uh, Budasari has a very nice video also of how he designs a digital denture and then imports it over uh, all on four, all on six type of um, implant restoration is able to achieve that quickly and efficiently. So do look out for that. But this provides us a business opportunity in a, in a sense, because as I said, GP's numbers are growing, placing numbers. But equally, and not as growing equally, are GPs that are looking to place implants, but perhaps are uneducated, are a little worried, a little feared. Imagine you being the laboratory that is able to walk them through hand hold their hands and provide. Now, they're, they're doing single implant restoration, single molars or nothing nothing crazy, but you're able to bring that to them as clients and revenue in order, you know, and now they can bill that to their, to their clients, to their patients. That solidifies that relationship. That also, as they become more proficient and more knowledgeable and, and feel more comfortable with placing implants, you will be their go-to as a laboratory source because they're comfortable. You've walked the walk with them. You've achieved a great level of success and they will be more apt to do more and more and that two and a half laboratories will become less and less into one. The more service you can provide, the more loyalty you can provide, the better relationship will be. So certainly virtual guided implant planning identifies nerve in this, and I use Three Shape Implant Studio, but it's, it's fairly easy. You do need to understand the topography and some of the, the nomenclature within, but you can provide a quick and easy, you know, um, type of surgical guide similar to this. Now, obviously, the dentist chooses the type of implant rest, um, system, but you can take a CBCT scan as well as a surface scan because you do need the two to align. Unfortunately, a CBCT scan is not geometrically um, 
um, accurate, and therefore we need a, a surface scan. Now, a surface scan could be either an intraoral scan or a model scan, and that's the one you're going to be building your surgical guide on. But the CBCT scan or the cone beam scan is what you need in order to identify landmarks like mandibular nerve, sinuses, where the bone density, and so on and so forth. And then you can generate a, a nice um, implant um, surgical guide for, for the dentist. Now, if you're doing either a tooth-borne surgical guide or a dentalist case, um, these are the two differences that you would need. Obviously, with the dentalist, the surface scan becomes more difficult, so you would use a, a denture file with radioactive markers in order to create a, a similar response. With Three Shape Implant Studios, you're able to virtually replace or remove teeth. Um, so you're able to, if these two teeth, for example, are failing, we're able to virtually do it. So now the patient has um, has gone to the dentist uh, just for a consult, and you know, with the plan of the next visit is to be able to extract those two teeth and perhaps do an immediate load. Now you're able to do that and be able to walk the dentist through the process um, in it, and certainly. Again, the landmarks you see here on the right-hand side is the, the mandibular nerve that you do have to identify, and there is a specific training for 3 Shape Studio, um, as well as any of the mandibular nerve fossas and sinuses, but I can actually click on different bone areas to see what the density of that bone. And oftentimes, you know, in the laboratory world, we, we get a case, and if it's an implant case, we look at it, and, and sometimes it's going out to left field, and we're scratching our head saying, how, how is this possible? How did the oral surgeon place this? And when we make a phone call, what is the typical answer? Well, that's where bone was. And the and I agree, that's where bone was. But my my comment to the dentist would be that's not the only place that there's bone. So with this software, you can see different areas, and within two or three millimeters, the density units can fluctuate from 400 density units all the way to close to 2,000. So you want to anchor the implant in a place where it will really create a benefit. Three Shape Implant Studio is what I use, and it, it is restorative centric. So you first look at the restoration, place it, and this is not something that you use for the immediate load, but it's for planning purposes. So now you can see exactly where the access hole is coming to. The ability to create this or and, and move it as well as the system and the length and the angulation and so on, and I'm not going to get too much into detail, but the versatility and the control that you can achieve with is really remarkable. Now, it creates a surgical guide and you can brand it, you can help it, you know, and, and these are for your GPs. These are for your existing clinicians that perhaps are looking to place implants, perhaps are sending their implant work to another laboratory, or even the ones that are interested in learning how to do this, you can do this alongside of them. Now, you're increasing their revenue stream while increasing your own as well. Another little thing and that has helped me tremendously in several other laboratories is oral surgeons. Now, oral surgeons like surgical guides, typically, and being able to align yourself with oral surgeon is something that is, would behoove and certainly would help your laboratory because guess what? Oral surgeons oftentimes have a network of GPs who always refer to them. If you're doing these surgical guides and you're doing them well, where the oral surgeon is even impressed, when Dr. Jones calls the oral surgeon and says, Mr. Smith is coming in, can you please extract your teeth, place two, whatever, 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 um, Dr. Jones, who's the oral surgeon, would say, you know what, Dr. Smith, I'm working with Lab ABC. They're doing some amazing work with their with their uh, surgical guides. It's a home run every single time. I suggest maybe at least consider them. And that creates a conversation that now you can, once you, you start from the surgical guide portion of things, you in essence own that case, the restorative end of it as well. Because you've already seen from A to Z, you already have completed the process, you already visualized and planned it all the way through, so now it's a no-brainer to just go with that laboratory to be able to reach that level of success. And then obviously the final approval is always and it must be signed off by a licensed dentist, uh, a licensed dentist rather, or an oral surgeon must approve in order for you to progress and the software has different type of measures to prevent that from, you know, you should never progress without a licensed dentist. But at that point, implant designs and options are limitless. You can do a bar, you can do a hybrid, you can do 
a um, you know a, a high impact polymer with individual crowns. And all of this is what I'm getting at. You can do this by by having a step where you get into digital dentures first, which you would need in order to heal if you get into uh, conversions. And then you already have your design mechanism. You already have your library. You already have the approved protocol that now you're converting into an implant modality. So the opportunity is tremendous. And if you're not doing it at the current moment, I would honestly suggest you ask yourself why, because the opportunity is there. And if it's the knowledge that's preventing you from moving towards there, seek out knowledge. And this is the perfect time to do this with these type of webinars and, and different things where you can gain greater level of knowledge. But as far as digital ventures, that has become the second largest uh, market. And in fact, it's developing quickly in 2019 and 2020, which is where we are right now. And as well as it, it's creating a, a denture market projected to be $3.6 billion by 2020. And remember, there were 40 million denture wearers, um, you know, in the U.S. And well, I shouldn't say denture wearers, they're, they're edentulous patients, which pr we provide an opportunity for them um, to have dentures and to be able to create, to, to go back to mastication and function and enhance their li li uh, lives in the process. So there are several manufacturers that have developed different types of digital dentures, and we can certainly talk about that here as well. Uh, there is another webinar that I'm doing next month, which is demystifying digital dentures, which will go deeper into what the difference is in digital dentures and their workflows. Because certainly you can do a monoblock, you can do a, you can mill, you can print, you can have individual, um, you know, the, the pink portion or the denture base as well as the teeth separately. There's so many combinations that you can achieve, which will be more addressed in that. Um, in that webinar that I encourage you to join us for, and I would love to see you there. But focusing on, on digital dentures, I mean, the market is there. So for whether it's for your laboratory as well as your dentist, the opportunity is there to, to grow that revenue stream, grow that bottom line, enhance it. And I'll show you in a little bit, there's a slide of how much a digital denture ends up costing as far as materials and where you can benefit from it in the process. So the opportunities are plentiful. Uh, the 3D dental prosthetic market is expected to account a higher share of the dental CAD CAM and dental prosthetic markets. It's expected to grow at a rate of 5.7% compounded uh, by 2026. Uh, that's, that's a nice, you know, enhancement in, in growth um, that you need to tap into. And if you're not currently, and if you haven't been thinking of of tapping into that. I strongly suggest doing that because the 5.7% is a significant amount that if you can grow that every year in that particular department, I think your laboratory would certainly be greater for it and, and you know, with the efficiency of digital. So as I said, there are multiple different ways and we'll talk about some products towards the end, but there are many different ways. You know, I, I personally use 3Shape, I'm also uh, use ExoCAD, but both options provide you with the ability of designing um, a digital denture. And it's, it's remarkable. And those that have taken upon themselves to learn and grow with this. And, and I have to emphasize that some of the movement that I see a lot in digital dentures are fixed technicians that are also looking into this and seeing what it is that they can do. So if you're a laboratory that provides just fixed and you haven't tapped into the digital dentures, why not? You know, the opportunity is there. You have the software. You most likely have either a mill or a 3D printer or both. You're able to do digital dentures very economically, very easily. And at the end of the day, you're, you're in control of your end result. You're in control of your product. You know what your dentist clients have grown to expect from your laboratory. And you can deliver that with a high level of control, efficiency, and repeatability and consistency. That's a great, great part of your, your revenue stream that you can achieve. So there are, with, as far as 3D printers, now there are different milling, there are different processes of manufacturing. Certainly there's a pros and cons to everything. Uh, there's milling as well as printing. Um, here at Envision Tech with the DLP, and it's some remarkable, they, they process a, what is called the digital light processing, which is super, super fast. It is faster than an SLA. Um, it provides a volumetric 
picked, and it's all from this dome that has been created um, within, obviously, the mechanism itself and the way the light and the lens and the optics shine on it. So you're able to produce a digital denture, a base, and then teeth, perhaps in about anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes with, with the speed, and I'll show you in a little bit. Now, if you are a Form Labs user, they too have their own solution, uh, which is a fine solution. It does take a little bit longer, but nonetheless, if you're a laboratory that, that can take the time and not need the speed, it's an option. But certainly, I encourage and, and suggest looking at the Envision One because what it can accomplish and what it can do is, is significant. And I use it myself, which is fantastic. So um, there's CDL te technology, which is uh, the Envision One. And it reduces the separation forces. It actually, the print time for, we use the ortho model as an example, is 30% faster than some of its competitor. Its accuracy is significant with uh, isotropic properties and consistency for part properties. So you want your part to be consistent all throughout and homogeneous in a process too. Um, the, the materials are really remarkable. And this is where I was, uh, quite frankly, blown away in many ways because the materials be really become to life. If you look now, if you look at the at the top right where the the, um, the the resins or the denture bases are, that process. I mean, if you can load on a build plate as many as you can, let's just say perhaps ten of them, um, and you, you might be able to do more if you scale them. Um, whether it's a, a you, you're doing a single denture or ten dentures, the same amount of time is required because it's, it's the light that actually uh, moves to it. And different than some of the competitors, this doesn't have the the level of translucency for this resin. So if you haven't checked it out, I would certainly suggest checking out the E1 denture. And they have a nice variation of material for teeth. Yes, you can print digital denture teeth and be able to put the two together with the same resin. So now you have a digital denture base that you can print and equally you can print in different materials. And if you see at the bottom right, you can see the quality of the prints that come out with different shapes. Marry the two and it's a very quick and easy way of being able to produce a denture for your clients that are significantly less expensive than what we would in an analog. The beautiful part again, and what I just want to emphasize with the difference between this and the analog is that you're letting the technology do the bulk of the heavy lifting, meaning you're using your dental intelligence because you know what a good denture is, you know what a good fitting denture is, you know what a good functioning denture is. That's the type of stuff that you need to input into the design um, factor of it. And then the rest is either the 3D printer or the mill, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, you're able to do that. So your attention and your effort can now move to designing more, to creating more opportunities for your laboratory to generate profit, generate revenues, um, able to create, multiply that um, dental intelligence that you've cultivated for so many years and so much education and experience. You're now able to multiply that where a typical denture technician perhaps who was able to do uh, let's just call it five dentures a day. Now, perhaps they can, with the same, they can do 25 a day and allowing the printer to do the bulk of the work. Now you, you've multiplied that talent or that human resource or that dental intelligence by five, if not more, five times per day. Think of what that can directly in, and immediately do to your revenue and your, your bottom line of your laboratory. This is a incredible and important way for you to grow your business um, in ways that you haven't thought of before. Again, as you're looking at some of these products, and any product for that matter, as you're looking at some of these products, if it strikes you as something that your clients would want, or if you've even had conversations where your clients um, have asked about it, inquire, look around. You know, reach out to folks, reach out to Zon. They can offer different solutions. And then ask yourself, if you're not doing it, why not? If your clients are asking for it, if this is a revenue stream, if you have the capabilities, which most of us do at this point, then why not is the question that you really want to ask yourself. So this is an example that um, Dr. Valerie Cooper McMillan, as well as John McMillan did for Envision Tech. And I found this to be very interesting because Yes, they've, John has done some magnificent characters, but this is a, a 
when it was printed as a monoblock. So what they've done is they've actually printed everything out of tooth color, uh, both the upper and the lower. Then they put um, GC Gradia as far as the, the composite for the pinks, and then they character, characterized it. And it came out a really aesthetic and realistic looking denture. What I want you to look at is what the cost of the printed denture that they were able to acquire even with the significant amount of characterization. Now, your laboratory may be in par with that and requires that again. The idea is that your clients have come to you because they've grown to expect the quality that you're producing for them. So not only have they come to you, but they're staying loyal to you. So that, that level of quality should not change. If anything, if you can, you can enhance it and make it better. But if you're doing that level of quality, the ability and the means to do so is there. Whatever quality you're doing, whatever quality is perceived, which is very subjective, that's where your clients have come to expect, and that's what we need to do. That's what we need to deliver in a consistent and repeatable way. But notice the cost of the printed. It's according to this, it's seven dollars and fifty cents, which is material cost. So if you currently have equipment, if you currently have a printer, if you're currently using three shape um, to produce your other materials, perhaps throughout the night or whatever have you, different modes, you can deploy these materials. The cost of the material is $7.50. You can certainly compete in the market, wherever your market is geographically, uh, compete in, a, in, a, in a, a, a very productive and profitable way, where more so than perhaps what we've done before, if you're doing, if you offered uh, dentures to your clientele. So certainly the, the opportunity for a, providing a great service, B, providing a great product, and C, creating a revenue and a profitable stream for your laboratory could be directly correlated to just the why not, and yes, let me do this. This is an opportunity to grow. And you can accomplish this with your existing dentist, and then that will parlay into their recommendations. Them talking to their dentist or, or fellow dentist, which, by the way, every dentist has a study club, and many of them have sometimes three or four study clubs, and think of the networks that you can work within that. You know, there's no better form of flattery than a recommendation. If you achieve this and are able to produce a quality digital denture, what's better than just letting your dentist know that, you know, let your friends know, which I'll talk about towards the end of this uh, presentation. But the opportunity is there is what I'm just trying to point out. The opportunities are there. And if you're not doing it, you need to really reflect and say, well, why am I not? Why am I not capturing this? So as I said, the one before had the monoblock where it was added to, um, GC Gradio was, was added to for the pink. But that's, not, that's just one way. You can also do the same thing. And again, this is with Envision Tech, uh, that you can print out a, the, the tooth fiber, the denture teeth. You can print out the um, denture base, and then you can loot the two together. And then, and by the way, once you do this process, the rest is just like conventional um, dentures. You can pumice it. You can now there are some folks out there that are light curing uh, glaze, which is fine. Uh, but you can similarly just pumice it and high shine it, and there's different mediums that you can shine it. But now it's more similar to what was. A, the analog denture because now you're incorporating teeth that there's different studies out there that show that some that these teeth are stronger than perhaps some of the analog and certainly there's a lot of debate between uh, milling versus printing but I think the uh, the modality will will grow and personally I think the materials uh, are getting there certainly for 3d printer for 3d printing that will surpass some of the milling capabilities but the options are there, the ability of doing so is there. And with that said, if you're milling, um, use that mill to get into digital dentures, which we'll get into in a second. Use that mill to be able to mill out teeth, mill out um, a denture base and loot the two together. And now you're able to offer a digital denture, which is a service and a product that perhaps you haven't before and maybe your clients are not offering it as well. So the opportunity is certainly plentiful. Um, when it comes to 3D milling, a nice, a very nice product that I've worked with quite a bit was the, the Keystone Key Mill. It, it, it's the diamond D type of strength with a PMM. 
MMA, and it mills very nicely. It's very easy to finish. And the same idea here again, you have a, a denture base that you're milling out. Uh, and then you can, and there's different modalities. You can, you can print, you can mill teeth, you can buy carded teeth. There's different solutions that, again, we'll get into um, in the webinar in, in May about the demystifying digital dentures. But there's not one answer to all. It's really what aligns with your laboratory. Where can you find the best efficiencies? And how can you use what you currently have in your laboratory repertoire to just enhance and elevate and make things better. The opportunity is there. So certainly if you haven't tried, I, I definitely suggest um, trying the Keystone Key Mill because it just mills out so nicely and so cleanly. And literally what you see here in the image, especially on the left-hand side, um, this is what you get. It's, it's an incredibly clean mill or milling um, process that uh, you end up getting some really, really good results. And this is no different than what you, you use in your uh, pressure um, denture, packing denture right now. This is PMMA that is more homogeneous because they, the way they process it, and it's something that if you've been to some of my lectures, I, I call unadulterated materials because unfortunately we as dental technicians tend to push the envelope with different things. This is the way that the R&D has developed for strength, for longevity, for validity. And these pucks are made in a uniform ISO process. So it's not, you're not going to get the voids. You're not going to get the differences in different mixing where one is perhaps, you're going to get a homogeneous throughout uh, in this puck. And then that's why uh, I think it's a great product. And if you're, if you're not 3D printing and you're just milling, it's something to certainly consider and be able to add to your laboratory as well. Last but not least, when it comes to removable dentures, and then we'll get into a little bit of the business sense of things, is the, the removable partial dentures, which um, you know a lot of folks tend to gleam over. And I know a lot of laboratories outsource it to a steel lab. But think about this. You here have an opportunity to either print wax, and if you still need the um, a chrome cobalt type of um, RPD, but you can also have non-metal options. Now, this is what I'm finding, and Acetyl also provides a great product in this. And the reason why I say that is because they have multiple options within the Acetyl. Um, it's sold as Don as well. But they have the tooth color, which you see at the bottom left uh, side. They also have the pink and the clear. Now, what I see, and, and dentists absolutely love it, first of all, it's incredibly light. So when the patient wears it, they feel like there's, it, it, they, it disappears in their mouth. It's not something that is unsightly. It's not something that's heavy. It doesn't have that metallic taste that some of the other um, steel frames may possess. Um, you can do either a pink or a clear or even tooth color and be able to blend it into the mouth. It just disappears. Now, depending on where the height of contours are, you can even ex interchange um, claps, for example. So with this material, what's really cool is you can design it on three shape, as you see at the top right, is my design for, um, uh, for RPD. So all the, all the dental intelligence, all the, everything, the experience and the knowledge that you know that works within the removal partial denture work, no difference. It's in the design. You're able to achieve that, but now you're, you have products and options to offer your dentist clients. So if you want to do, for example, a clear frame, but then have the, um, the clasp in a tooth color, you can. It, it does require an additional step, which um, we can get into a, at a different um, point, but you're able to do the whole frame from the same material, which is the clear or the pink or even the tooth color, or there is um, a product that you can now add clasped to. So if you're doing a pink um, uh, frame and you want to add a clear or a tooth color to the height of contour, depending on where you're placing that clasp for retention, the opportunity is there. But the greatest part is if this may be a product that your dentists aren't even aware that exists they may shy away, patients may shy away from doing removable partial dentures because they don't like the unsightly chrome cobalt if that's the case for them. Having this edge, having this opportunity, and it all falls within the removable partial dentures, you can achieve that and be able to provide that for your dentist. And now your dentist can then offer that to their patients. 
So it's a win-win literally all throughout the chain. It's a win for the patient. It's a win for the dentist. It's a win for the laboratory. And if you have dental systems in three shapes, it's very easy. And you most likely already have this if it's a premium package. You have these modules that you can achieve this. So again, going back to how I started, if you haven't or if you're not doing it, ask yourself why. Now, if you can't come up with a reason as to why, then I encourage you to look upon how it is that you can that you can incorporate it into your businesses and into your laboratory and start speaking to your dentist. Start telling them what you're offering because, again, you're doing something for the dentist that will make them more profitable, that will make them be able to offer their patients a better product, perhaps, or a better process or a better functioning uh, prosthetic that perhaps they wouldn't have done otherwise. So now that we've done everything, uh, we've incorporated, we've answered the why not, because hopefully the answer is yes, I can, and I will uh, incorporate that into the laboratory. Now you have to make sure, how do you effectively market strategy? How do you know? How do you let your clients know? You know, this is a nice picture where, you know, you can scream out into the ocean, but if your clients are not there, if the patients are not there, if your client dentists are not there, is anybody really listening? You know, many businesses fall into this trap that they're doing a significant amount of marketing, but they don't know their audience. They don't know their target. So they're literally wait, screaming and waving into a, a sea where nobody's there, nobody's listening, which is a waste of an effort. So just quickly, I only have about three slides for this, but just I wanted to share with all you laboratory owners out there and laboratory technicians, different ways of marketing. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that our, as I said in the very beginning, that our industry and our profession is incredibly resilient. We will come out of this. And we, and I am a true believer and a strong believer that if we learn and grow and expand, we will come out of this stronger and hopefully better for it. And then a year from now, we can talk about it and say, wow, you know, we've done so much more. We've done, so, we've, we can, we've grown better and greater than we've ever anticipated. So when it comes to marketing strategies, there are different types of strategies, and I'll go through again just with three slides, and, and each one of these is really a, a, a conversation in and of itself that can take well over an hour each. But um, sharing, and, and especially with social media today and, and digital means like we're, we're going over right now, it has, has become easier than ever. And many ways, it's become inexpensive, if, if not oftentimes completely free. So you have the sharing of mentors, the shares, the reposts, the reviews, which are earned media. Um, these are where you want to get into where I said earlier, uh, into study groups, study clubs. They all have some kind of social, social media platforms. Start having or identifying your dentists that belong to these type of groups and these type of uh, platforms and utilize that. Become that because if one, if a respected member of a club shares that your laboratory is offering something innovative and something new that perhaps the competitors are not, people will come to check it out. People will see in, the, in that lab, in that space, they will look upon you. Now, it may start as just that one product, but sure enough, with your quality and, and your relationship building, it can grow into a parlay into a larger. Um, revenue stream, a larger account. Advertising certainly you can do as well as own media, which I, I really believe that every laboratory at this point should have a website. And if you don't, you, you should really consider it because one of the first things, and, and it doesn't have to be in dentistry, but in, in the world these days, when you hear of a product, you hear of a company and it has nothing to do with dentistry, what is the first thing you do? You Google them, you check it out. If they don't have a website, if they don't have a presence, it, they become irrelevant. They become something that you don't feel comfortable with really engaging in business with. So for the mere, just putting a website, and obviously it needs to be a organic and a cohesive website that will attract people, but at the very least you need to have a presence in the website. And, and offering these type of products is a great way of achieving so. So this is, again, a slide where marketing strategy and where you need to really gravitate or, or pull people through. Uh, what is it? Who are you is the first step. This is what you need to establish. These are questions that you can also ask yourself. Um, how is it that, you know, and, and likewise, you can even ask your clients, you know, what are some of the things? Because there are things that perhaps they're, 
they gravitated to you that you hopefully are aware of, but you may not be. And if that's the case, that's something that you really want to hone in on and be able to market that to those that are not aware of what it is you do and how you do it. So it's, a lot of it is industry and product um, education, what it is that you're doing. So some of the things that I shared, some of the options and opportunities that we shared here, whether it's removal partial dentures, digital dentures, implants, if any of these things are novel and new and something that you, these are things that you can share with your clients and then it builds up that momentum where it then it, it provides an established interest which then cultivates and creates you as their problem solver because they recognize the problem. Have you ever noticed where if you don't know you're missing something, it doesn't bother you. The moment you recognize that you're missing something, suddenly that's the only attention that you're focusing on uh, because you recognize that you're missing it. Well, dentists are the same. If there's an option, if there's a product that they are not aware of, they're not going to ask for it. They're not going to look for it. But if you make them aware of it, suddenly it's something that they realize that, hmm, this is an option that I can offer my patients and I can actually do better for them and I can do better for myself. Suddenly that burning desire becomes a burning need where they're going to reach out for you. And where they reach out, they're looking for solutions, which you are the solution provider through these options. And there's different opportunities of producing that. So now that you've committed to adding this type of product and service, let the world know. There are so many different ways of doing that. Certainly networking, speaking, meetings, obviously not now, but when things loosen up. Uh, this print publications, direct mail, but look at the blue side. Social media is a great way of doing it. Webinars, similar to what you're uh, registered for and listening to now. A phone or a video call, blogging, emailing, email campaign, search engines. There are so many opportunities that don't cost money that allows you to be that solution provider, allows you to be a product um, oriented and, and, and again the idea is that you're helping your clients to become more successful become more successful financially and become more successful as health providers dental providers to their patients because you're offering them opportunities to restore their patients that perhaps they weren't aware of perhaps they they thought that there was only one way of doing it and now you're coming in and showing them that there's a better way of doing it and that you're able and capable and an expert in doing that in the process. So with that said, I mean, I hope I, I've given you a lot of thoughts, at the very least some food for thought. Uh, just ask yourself and reflect, if you're not doing something in your laboratory, why not? And hopefully the answer will come to you that you should be doing it because it really does change dramatically your laboratory, the, your relationship, the service, the opportunity, the options that you provide. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for, for listening in. I appreciate you spending time. Um, and I hope everybody remains uh, safe, healthy, and in great spirits. So the first question here is from Rich. Uh, he commented, I found that the try-in procedure for digital dentures are difficult for my dentist to accept a monolithic unadjustable appliance. What are your thoughts around that? So there, there are several things. Yes, um, some dentists, because I've had multiple conversations with dentists and they, the monochrome is, is where they feel only because they're used to seeing it in a certain way. So when you're trying in a monoblock, they're, they're just seeing old tooth color or old ivory or whatever have you. Um, there's one of two ways. Either it's a conversation where once you deliver the digital denture that is now pink and tooth color, um, their their angst is going to be reduced. Or, quite frankly, if you have a dentist that is very nervous about that, put some composite on even even the triumphs. Um, give them what the end result could be and could look like, and it might even, with slight adjustments, become the end result. Now, the only difference is, and as he said, with trying being able to border mold it becomes a challenge. So oftentimes the try-ins become the, the opportunity for them to take a, a, a ecostatic uh, impression with wax. So they're able to try that in, see the aesthetics, see the bite, the function, and then capture that border mold in order to have that proper function uh, going forward. So you can take that design and with three shape, it becomes very easy where they utilize it and then you scan the intaglio side or the, 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 the internal side and now just use that same design to um, adapt 
to that new impression material, that new integrity of surface. Perfect, thank you. Uh, and then we have two other questions to address. The question is from Anthony. He just ordered and has no experience with digital dentures or implants. How long do you expect for him to realize any ROI? He purchased a complete restorative with three shapes and has been in the denture business his whole life. Okay. So being in the denture business is, is actually a, a benefit because there's um, a lot in the translation. You've, you've walk the walk you've done it in an analog so now the learning curve becomes significantly shorter so as far as roi it really depends on geographically your your profits as well as how the quantity or the volume you're going to do the nice thing is that you can achieve our roi significantly faster because you can scale uh the production which is different than what we did with analog because analog you were limited to what your production is but as a designer and a verse designer and and you've gotten the right software um, you can input that dental intelligence, and then it's just a matter of how many, what is the volume that you can achieve in order to get that ROI. So it's, it's difficult to answer without, you know, it depends on what you charge, what your profitability is, what the percentage is, and then what volume um, you're getting per month in order to recoup the, um, you know, the, the initial investment. Thanks, Daniel. And then this last question is from Anthony. Um, what is the average estimated cost of starting a digital denture lab if all equipment, materials, software, tooling, et cetera, is needed? Are we talking 100K, 200K? What's the estimate? So, you know, that's a, it's, a, it's a very good question. Um, and not to date myself, but, you know, technology has uh, over time becomes um, less expensive with competition and things like that. And, and I, I hate using the word less expensive. Or, and, but, you know, I remember the days when those flat screen TVs came out and, you know, a 55 inch was $10,000. And so now, you know, I'm aging myself. And now you can go into Costco and purchase the same exact TV and better technology, better everything for less than a thousand. So that's how kind of with technology, um, depending on the modality that you want to use. If you're setting up a purely digital denture lab, you have to make a decision whether you're going to go with um, milling or 3D printing. Um, that's a decision that you really have to ponder and think about because there are some tremendous advancement moving forward and i know there's a lot of movement in the 3d printing world um so with that said and, and to my reference is that these technologies are becoming less expensive so what was perhaps five six seven years ago a hundred thousand today is is significantly less um so you, well, you would need to obviously be able to um, get software for you to design. So uh, that could be, you know, several, um, and then with a 3D printer, which are becoming less and less nowadays too. So it's really a question of what kind of production you want to do, how many of it you want to do, because then that's going to be a, um, with what kind of production output you're looking to do, um, which will align you with the right type of equipment. And quite honestly, the best folks to be able to answer that are the folks that are have organized this, which is non dental. Uh, they'll they have several options of both the software as well as the output or the throughput, whether it's milling or 3D printing. And within those, they have several options depending on your scalability and what you're trying to achieve. Um, so as far as pricing and as far as what needs to be done, I mean, they, a non representative would be the best person to speak with uh, to guide you in that direction.